This is John Cola with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. We're all the way here in Santa Rosa, California, about one hour north of San Francisco, and we're at the True North Health Center. We're here for one very important reason. We're here to talk to Dr. Alan Goldhammer, who has been water fasting and helping patients adopt a uh, health promoting whole plant food based diet for the last 30 years. And we're going to talk to him specifically about refined foods, including refined sugar oil and salt and other highly processed foods and why they may not be so good for you. So anyways, uh, next let's go in talk to Dr. Alan Goldhammer about some of these refined foods. So now I'm here with Dr. Alan Goldhammer and today we're going to talk to you guys about refined foods, whether that's refined flour into baked goods or refined cornmeal. Dr. Goldhammer, what's the biggest problem with refined foods? Well, you know, we the, the title of our book is The Pleasure Trap. Uh, mastering the hidden force that undermines health and happiness. And the reason we said that was because we believe that the pleasure trap is the hidden force that undermines health and happiness. The fact is the artificial stimulation of dopamine in our brain, those, that pleasure-based uh, hormone, um, is a um, really deceptive trap because we're designed to seek pleasure. and we're designed for an environment where these highly processed foods don't exist. So in the world of our ancient ancestors, there was no temptation to be eating sugars, oils, and you know, highly processed foods. We had whole natural foods to choose from, and that's how we're designed. The problem is, post-industrial revolution, we've come up with all kinds of ways of processing food. It's, our brains, though, are still designed for the world of our ancient ancestors, and as a consequence, when we get exposed to these very concentrated foods, our brains stimulate more dopamine secretion. We're designed for an environment of scarcity, where the biological imperative was to get enough to eat and avoid being eaten. And so our brain rewards us any time we find calorically dense foods. So the higher the caloric density, the more dopamine secreted, the more pleasure we experience. Well, in the world of our ancient ancestors, that mechanism worked well. It doesn't work as well today, because in the today, with oil, salts, and sugars, and highly processed foods, the problem is we eat those chemicals, we like the way it makes us feel, and we tend to eat more. The negative effect is we develop the disease of dietary excess. So we become fat, we develop high blood pressure or cardiovascular disease, we develop uh, diabetes, and we develop autoimmune diseases. Conditions that used to be very rare, but now are becoming ubiquitous. Um, Dr. McDougall talks about these diseases as the diseases of kings, because it was only the wealthy elite that ever got to have those diseases, and now, you know, they're very, very common. Um, and so the focus is to recognize the pleasure trap, particularly we're talking now about the dietary pleasure trap, recognizing the insidious natures of these chemicals in the food, and then designing the diet to eliminate those chemicals. So that's what we talk about, a whole foods, plant-based diet that's SOS-free. SOS stands for the International Symbol of Danger. It also stands for sugars, oils, and salts. Yeah. So the diets that we put together in our cookbooks, in our program, don't rely on any highly processed chemicals added to the food. We don't use sugars in any of its form, whether it's agave or fructose or any of these concentrated sweeteners. We don't use any um, uh, concentrated salts, and we don't use any oils, including coconut oil or any other oils. Now, we do get, of course, our essential fatty acids from whole foods, and we get sugar from whole foods, and we get the sodium and other minerals we need from whole foods. But it turns out to make a profound difference. Mm. If your diet is coming from whole natural foods, the satiety mechanisms in your brain, your ability to process the foods is very different than if you're eating a bunch of highly processed chemicals. Uh, the problem is not everybody wants to give up their addictions. Yeah. They don't want to quit smoking, they don't want to quit drinking, they don't want to quit using drugs, and they don't want to give up their sugars, oils, and salts. Wow. So, Dr. Goldhammer, would you say that somebody is like, could be a sugar addict if they're adding sugar to every meal because they're literally getting a dopamine response and they need, need to have at least that much or more because, you know, they're, they're artificially stimulated at that point? You know, when we're dealing with addicts uh, at the Trina Health Center, whether they're addicted to caffeine or they're addicted to alcohol or, or other drugs, one of the hallmarks of drug addiction is that people are using a substance not just to feel good, but they have to continue to use the substance to avoid feeling bad. Mm -hmm. And you really know, when you stop using caffeine, there isn't any question, you're an addict. And you can feel, the, and, and the same thing is true for many people with sugars, with oils, it's very difficult for them 
to give these substances up. That's where sometimes fasting can be helpful because you can more rapidly allow people to free themselves from those addictions. Um, so it, they may not be as powerful a drug-like effect as cocaine or methamphetamines, but they're, they're working on the same neural cascade. They're the same kind of neurological mechanisms at play with these highly processed chemicals. And so, yeah, I would treat them, and, and we do find that managing patients that want to get free of these chemicals uh, is very much like treating addicts of any kind. So the question I have for you next is, what would you say to somebody that like wants to eat a SOS free diet and eat, you know, good fruit and vegetable based diet and other whole plant based foods, but just can't do it because it doesn't taste good unless they add sugar to it? I mean, well, what, what's the answer to the that? The first thing is they have to get educated enough to know that yes, at first it may be tasteless swill to them, but their taste, their neuroadaptive mechanism will in time take place. And we know even how long that takes, depending on which substance we're talking about. We know with salt it can take up to 30 days. We know with fats it can take up to three months. If people are not patient enough or they don't have the discipline to wait for the body to adapt, one option would be to undergo a period of medically supervised water-only fasting, because then the process happens much more quickly. So if you're patient and persistent, people do adapt to a health-promoting diet. If you need a little help, then, you know, it's very much like treating alcoholics. If you tell an alcoholic, oh, it's the alcohol, <laughs> stop drinking, sometimes they can. But other times people need a little help to make that transition. Uh, but ultimately it comes down to the same thing. Health results from healthful living. We've got to get people living healthfully. And adding chemicals to the food like sugar and oils and salts is not what I would define as healthful living. I mean, I definitely agree with that. Um, I think one of the cool things about the True North Health Center, besides water fasting you, which I've actually sent both my parents here to help them from some medical conditions, and when they left here, they were definitely more healthy than when they came. But more importantly, they got the education while they were here so that they could sustain and live on a plant-based, whole foods, SOS-free diet. And I uh, want to encourage you guys to come out and check them out. So Dr. Goldhammer, how can somebody learn more about the True North Health Center? Well, they could go to our website at truenorthhealth.com. Uh, if they're interested, they could fill out the registration forms and call for a free phone consult where we can talk to them about whether or not this type of an approach might be relevant to them. They can call us at 707-586-5555. And if they're ambitious, they can read our book, The Pleasure yeah. Trap. Yeah, definitely want to encourage you guys to buy The Pleasure Trap. It's available on Amazon, also available at healthpromoting.com, their website. And uh, definitely a good read because I think one of the big challenges in this day and age is actually the pleasure trap. I mean, all you guys out there probably watching this are probably addicted in some form or another to the pleasure trap. And it's best to just kick the habit. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. And once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRod.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best. All right, this is John Kohler with OKRod.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. We're here at the 2014 Woodstock Fruit Festival. And uh, what I'll be